Hello and welcome to Global Market Bulletin TV. Today, we'd like to welcome Dr. Linda Marban, Chief Executive Officer and Director of Capricor Therapeutics. You're traded under the NASDAQ symbol CAPR. We're glad that you're with us. Um, yours is a biotechnology company focused on the development of transformative cell and exosome-based therapeutics for the treatment and prevention of muscular and other select diseases. Please tell us a bit about yourself and Capricor Therapeutics for those who are unfamiliar. Uh, yeah, so um, thank you so much for um, inviting me to join you this morning. My name is Linda Marban. I am, in fact, the CEO of Capricor Therapeutics. Um, I come to biotechnology via the bench. I have a PhD in cardiovascular physiology. I did my uh, doctoral research at Cleveland Clinic and then uh, postdoctoral and early faculty training at Johns Hopkins before I jumped over to biotechnology, first in gene therapy and now in cell therapy. Uh, Capricor was founded out of technology um, from Johns Hopkins University and the University of Rome. Um, and it's basically um, a cell therapy that functions um, rather than like a stem cell therapy, it is more like a CAR T kind of therapy where it goes in and it stimulates an immune response, uh, prevents um, fibrosis, which is scarring, um, and in other ways helps the body to heal. We are focusing right now on um, a very serious, in fact, fatal neuromuscular disease called Duchenne muscular dystrophy, um, which is an X-linked disorder, meaning that it is expressed um, and it is evident only in uh, males of the species. So boys are the ones that are impacted. And oftentimes uh, families can have more than one son with it before they figure out that the mom as a carrier comes through the mother. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. Now, on June 7th, recently, you announced an upcoming type B clinical meeting with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration planned for early Q3 of this year. Um, during that meeting, you plan to outline the proposed path towards submission of a potential biologics license application and further discuss its ongoing HOPE 3 clinical trial with the agency. Um, can you tell us a bit more about this exciting development and what it means for the future of CAP 1002 for the treatment of Duchenne muscular dystrophy? So this opportunity for us is really um, one that we don't take lightly and one that we are greatly anticipating. Uh, we're directly engaging with the agency now. Um, they've looked very carefully at our data. They've looked at the data from the HOPE 1 clinical trial, the HOPE 2 clinical trial, and perhaps um, most interestingly, the HOPE 2 open label extension data. And they realized that um, they see that there is a significant attenuation of the progression of the disease in those that have been treated by CAP-1002. Uh, this has been validated by uh, stories um, by parents and uh, the young men themselves that they are definitely feeling and functioning better than uh, other people impacted by the same disease process at the same point uh, without CAP-1002. So FDA is, is, you know, made a commitment to move therapies forward. Um, they believe very much if you have good clinical data and good safety data that um, there should be opportunities to get these therapies to uh, patients that are impacted. And especially um, in our situation, we see what we are calling, um, and it's called by the industry, disease modification, which means if you were lucky enough to be randomized to receive CAP-1002, at the beginning of the HOPE-2 clinical trial, four years later, four years later, you are still doing better than the placebo-treated patients. So the sooner we get CAP-1002 on board, the better. Uh, the agency has to uphold all the rules and regs of making sure that safe and effective products get to Americans. And so uh, we are working very closely with them. And we believe that this meeting will give us a clear path to registration of CAP-1002. Oh, that's wonderful. And now in May, you shared an update that HOPE 3, your phase three clinical trial of CAP 1002 in DMD continues to progress well. Um, could you also just take a moment to outline the details of the HOPE 3 trial? Just a little bit more. So um, the trial is currently planned to enroll 68 patients. Um, it's a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial with a one-to-one -one randomization. That means uh, the kids have a 50-50 chance of getting drug versus placebo. Um, we're studying them for a year. Um, and the primary efficacy endpoint is the performance of the upper limb version 2.0. That's actually arms, hands, and shoulder function. 
Uh, the reason that we're using uh, that metric is most of our patients are in the later stage of the disease process and unable to ambulate on their own uh, for any length of time and are primarily uh, using a wheelchair. Therefore, uh, measuring walking would be impossible. So it's a validated and qualified measure, the performance of the upper limb, of upper limb function. Do your shoulders work? Do your arms work? Do your hands work? And passionately, um, people will tell you with Duchenne, when they go off their feet, it's hard. You know, who wants to be in a wheelchair? but not nearly as terrifying as losing upper limb function. We all use our cell phones. We all um, you know, can use a remote control, a telephone. Um, it allows them to eat, drink, um, tend to their personal needs um, and move their wheelchairs. So we're doing something very important for the space and um, we're hoping to, that the data will bear out. Uh, we also are the only therapeutic in Duchenne that has demonstrated improvement in cardiac function. And it is um, actually one of the major causes of um, terminal illness in these boys and young men that they have uh, cardiac dysfunction or cardiomyopathy. So CAP-1002 has been shown in HOPE-2 um, and uh, potentially we're, we're showing some new data on cardiac function um, in a few months um, that will indicate that cardiac function is indeed um, a, a preserved in these boys and young men with Duchenne uh, when treated with CAP-1002. Wow. What is the current statistic on people born with Duchenne or developing Duchenne? Yeah, so um, the, it's one in 3,500 live births in the U.S., so it's a uh, rare disease, and um, it is one in which um, approximately 20,000 people in the U.S. are currently uh, impacted by Duchenne muscular dystrophy. There's obviously other kinds of muscular dystrophies. Duchenne is the most severe of those types. And um, it means that the patients are born without dystrophin, which is also sort of like the glue um, that holds cells together and also holds them in shape um, so that they can't be uh, deformed. And, and a cell that uh, doesn't have dystrophin is very prone to um, early death, which is why muscles are most uh, greatly impacted. They're used most frequently. So they lose muscle function, um, both uh, skeletal muscle and smooth muscle as well. Oh, wow. Uh, the company had also announced publication of a preclinical study in Microbiology Spectrum, a leading peer-reviewed scientific journal of the American Society for Microbiology, highlighting the therapeutic potential of its Stealth X exosome platform technology to develop multivalent vaccine against the spike and nucleocapsid SARS-CoV-2 proteins. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about that and your plans to continue developing Capricor's Stealth X exosome platform designed to support the advancement of next generation vaccines and therapeutics? Absolutely. So your um, viewers are probably scratching their heads if they haven't heard of Capricor. They're probably saying like, wait, they're focusing on a cell therapy for no muscular disease. And now they're working on a exosome based vaccine. Like how did that happen? So I'm going to just give you a two minute overview so that they understand the trajectory. We understand that the mechanism of action of our cells are exosomes. That means when the cells are infused into the body of a patient, they release massive amounts of exosomes, which are nanometer sized lipid bilayer vesicles that are packed with um, healing or, or proteins or, or uh, molecules. It's like a toolbox for a cell to do repair. And uh, we contemplated using the exosomes made by our cells as an independent product, you know, sort of the um, API, if you will, um, the active pharmaceutical ingredient. But what we realized is that the cells were doing a great job, but it stimulated our interest in exosomes, exosomes as drug delivery vehicles. Let's get some custom-made contents inside an exosome and use it for delivery. And while we were sort of contemplating and building this paradigm, that dreaded um, COVID-19 came to the shores of the United States and there was a massive um, undertaking of vaccine development. Um, anybody who's gotten a COVID vaccine knows that they've probably gotten one that's um, mRNA encased in a lipid nanoparticle. Um, well, we are encasing our um, vaccine contents in an exosome, which is a natural product, doesn't cause side effects. There's trillions of them in milk and in beer and in, in any kind of biologic fluid um, and in blood transfusion, there are billions if not trillions of exosomes. So we know that they're very safe in the human body and they have docking stations on them. So you can put proteins on the outside of them um, to tell them where to go in the body so they can be targeted. 
So we decided to take the unique approach of building a vaccine for first for COVID, but really could be deployed for any infectious disease by taking advantage of the safe and um, non-toxic exosomes and then turning them into a vaccine. And because we can manipulate these exosomes, we didn't just have the ability to make a spike uh, type of exosome uh, vaccine, we we're able to use the spike and the nucleocapsid, which is the most prominent viral protein in um, COVID-19. And the reason ours is more effective is because we um, had some very clever scientists that's driving the nucleocapsid to the membrane of the exosome. So there's basically being um, presented um, as an antigen to drive an antibody and both the T cell response. Um, we're really excited about the opportunity to develop an exosome-based vaccine, just like Moderna. It's a jump off to all kinds of other opportunities using exosomes as delivery vehicles. But um, as your viewers may know, the vaccine is very easy um, to develop um, and determine if you have bioactivity, right? Because all your immune system has to do is see a little bit of that protein and that can cause um, a pretty significant immune response. So um, our preclinical studies, the one you mentioned, which has been published, um, um, suggest that we have a very powerful vaccine candidate and uh, we look forward to, to building that with the right partner as the opportunities become available. Very fascinating. And what does this mean for future iterations of the virus? So we have the ability to make um, this type of vaccine in under 100 days. It's a fantastic technology. I'm very proud of it. Um, our team has worked really hard to build in all of the benefits of a competent protein vaccine, which means it's actual protein. We don't have to worry about the body translating an RNA into a protein as we're giving it a protein, but we're able to use a native protein. So we can take a native protein, it can be made very quickly and put it on the outside um, or the inside of the exosome, depending upon what we want to do with it to drive that biology. So, um, you know, we think that this has great implications for really any type of strain of whether it be influenza or it could be COVID or who knows, you know, what's coming down the pike. But then we also are developing targeting technologies using the same opportunity, putting a protein on the outside, but telling our exosome, go to the brain, go to the liver, go to the muscle, go to the heart. And then when you get there, please deliver this content. And uh, these studies are preclinical right now, but we have great hopes that in 2024, we'll uh, have a, a, a very um, interesting therapeutic program using targeted exosomes for delivery. That's incredible, really fascinating stuff. Now, what do you feel though is the current biggest problem? Uh, and what is a market opportunity for transformative cell and exosome-based therapeutics that Capricor is working to address? Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest problem in biotech right now has just been it's an area that's been hit pretty hard by the market conditions. We're living sort of in crazy economic times and, and the NASDAQ, as well as, you know, individual companies are impacted. We're very lucky that we have um, supportive investors and a pretty strong balance sheet right now. And, you know, we did a partnership with Nippon Shinyaku last year. Um, and then another one this year, uh, which allows us to keep our balance sheet pretty strong um, while building our products. And so um, really the only thing I see right now is just our path towards license for the cells. We're almost there. I've been working on this for a really long time. So um, this is you know, the fulfillment of my promise to the Duchenne community that we would move this as quickly as possible. In terms of opportunity for Capricor, I think I just said it, you know, we're, we're really committed on our cell therapy program uh, to get that to these boys and young men and get it licensed so that we can uh, preserve their uh, muscle and cardiac function for as long as possible, maybe extend their lives. And then taking these exosomes as next gen therapeutics, I really feel like exosomes could be to biotechnology what antibodies have been in the past 20 years. Mm. Once we learn how to manufacture them, and I think we have a plan that works, um, and once we can deploy them almost as cheaply as a lipid nanoparticle, why wouldn't you use nature's delivery vehicle to put all kinds of contents, whether it be a chemotherapy, whether it be a gene therapy, or a protein replacement and enzyme replacement therapy. So the future is bright. Uh, we just have to get there. Yes, indeed. Now you've pretty much addressed this, but I'll ask you anyways, just to give you another opportunity, but in terms of Capricor's overall pipeline, what can investors look forward to in the next six to 12 months? Absolutely. So news on um, path to registration, we're getting pretty close and, and uh, we're very much looking forward to providing updates on that. 
Uh, we have an interim analysis plan on the HOPE 3 data, which will occur before the end of 23, uh, full enrollment of our trial, and then that sets the clock ticking towards the one-year performance of the upper limb uh, readouts on efficacy. Um, and then, of course, um, you know, things as they become available in the exosome program, uh, more preclinical data, potential announcing of a clinical development program, uh, potential partnerships. Uh, there's a lot that's going to be happening in the next year with CAP report. Very exciting stuff. This has been extremely informative. Can you please let the audience know the best place where they can find out more information about your company? Absolutely. We have a website, www.capreport.com. Uh, please feel free to peruse that. There's a lot of information about our science, uh, academic papers. We have over 100 of them um, to support the development of the cells and now the exosomes. Find out about our team and, and please feel free to reach out with any questions. Uh, there's also a really nice uh, Instagram posting by Elijah Stacy, uh, one of the uh, young men impacted by Duchenne, who um, in his early 20s is looking to, to preserve his life and the life of his brother who's coming behind him with the same disease. And he gave a beautiful talk to my team about the preservation of upper limb function. And I highly recommend that anybody that's interested in this listen to that because you really will understand the mountains that these guys are climbing and that we're climbing with them. Absolutely. We'll definitely check that out. Thank you so much, Dr. Marbans, for so Thank much you. for your time. And we look forward to seeing future developments and progress and speaking to you again soon. I look forward to it as well. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. You as well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.